Hi everyone, welcome back to the series. In the last episode, we added in our shields that protect our player against bullets from the enemy aliens. It was nice and short and sweet, but we now have one more of the main game features for Space Invaders. Or Invaders from Outer Space, because I don't want a copyright strike. In this video, we're going to take it nice and simple. We're just going to create a nice little background image for our game. Now we already have all the elements for this image inside of our sprites folder. The ones that we're going to be using are uh, background, background buildings and background floor. And we're just going to stitch all these together inside the game view to just make a nice background so our game isn't as boring and plain. So let's just jump straight into it. So the first thing that we're actually going to want to do is we're going to want to use our Space Invaders background sprite, which is just a, a really dark bluey green with a few stars on there. And what we're going to want, we're going to want this tiled all over our entire background. So we could do this by dragging it in as a sprite and trying to seamlessly match all of these up, but there is a quicker and easier way in my opinion. If we go to create 3D object and we select a plane, we'll add that in. Now we don't need a collider for this and what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to make sure that we are rotated along the X axis. Now it would be a lot easier if I just wrote in negative 90 there. So now if we jump out of 2D view, we can see that we have a plane floating around in a 3D view. And as we move this we can see that it appears when we're in between our background, uh, our gameplay elements and our camera. So we'll drag this way behind our gameplay elements here. And we'll size this up just so we can see it regardless of the size of the camera. So it goes all the way over everything's fine. Now we don't actually want this as well to cast shadows or receive shadows all we want is to put an image onto this. So because this is 3D we're going to need to add a material. So we'll create a new material inside our materials folder and we'll just call this stars. Now because we're going for a mobile game we'll just make sure this is as performant as possible. We'll change the shader to mobile unlit and then we get rid of all those extra options. But what we can do, we can drag in our background texture into our texture field. And then so we can see this working, we'll drag this star material onto our plane. Now one thing I should actually mention here, it's a lot easier to maintain if we keep this scale uh, relational, relational, uh, relationshipable, I have no idea what I'm going on about. But if we actually keep this uh, to scale is what I'm trying to get at. So if we make this... 2x2, two two, we'll have a perfectly square, perfectly crisp image. But we can see that even though it's not stretched, it is far too big. So we can come back over to our stars material and we can tile it. So if we set the tiling 5x5, five five, we see in our game view everything shrinks. But why is it not actually tiled? Well, first of all, we need to go into our sprite itself and we want to change the wrap mode from clamp to repeat. And just like that, we have a perfectly starry background. Need to apply that. And I think we can go ahead and tile that a little bit more, make it smaller, try 7x7. Seven seven. Ooh, that's looking a lot better. Maybe 8. Oh, there we go. We'll stick with 8. That's perfect. Okay, so we have our first layer of our background but now what about our second layer so we'll just rename this to stars and we can just copy and paste this we'll bring this one slightly forward and we'll call this ground now we'll create a second material for this we'll just call this ground again we'll set this to mobile unlit and we'll drag in our background floor texture and then drag our ground 
onto that plane. And we can drag this down to here, for example, just above where our shields are. And this will just be our base ground level. And we want to place our buildings on top of this now. So again, the way that we can do this, we can copy that plane again, call this one buildings. And we can just reorganize this layer a little bit, bring it slightly forward. One more material. And we'll call this buildings mobile unlit and we'll drag our buildings texture in here and finally put our buildings on there now as we can see this is a png image so we do need to pick a different shader rather than mobile unlit i went on a bit of autopilot there so the one that we need is actually under the unlit folder and we want transparent now if we drag this up we should, that's the wrong one, we should see that we have a transparent buildings layer. We need to bring that back round to positive 90 and we'll flip this 180 on the Y instead, just so we have the normals of the plane facing towards the camera and everything looks perfectly fine. So now we can resize this, we'll try 0 0.5 by 0 0.5, maybe a bit smaller. 0.25 by 0.25, maybe that's a little bit better. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. We can drag this down to our skyline. And what we're going to do, we're going to do exactly the same as what we did before when we tiled our starry background. So what we're going to want to do is, on the X, we're going to want five lots of these buildings. So we'll just times our 0 0.25 by 5 which gives us 1.25. Now we can see that it's stretched out, but if we go to our buildings and tile our buildings on the X five times and set our buildings to repeat, we can see that now we have our repeating buildings layer. And what we can do just to keep all these in place so we can move them around as one object, we'll create a new game object call these background elements, make sure this is at zero and we'll drag all three of our background elements inside it. So now if we felt the need to move it, all of our elements can move at the same time in the same space. But what if we wanted a slight bit of animation to this? This step is perfectly optional. If you like it as it is, as a static background, that's perfectly fine. You may be able to go on to the next tutorial now. What I'm going to show you now is I want to make the buildings loop left to right just uh, very slowly just to make it look like there's a bit of movement in the background. So we'll go ahead and create a new script. We'll put this in utilities I think. Uh, no we won't. It's not actually a utility. And we'll call this background scroll. Open this up in Visual Studio. Now in here we're going to want a public float scroll speed and we're also going to want a private renderer which we will just call rend. Now we'll set rend in our start method equal to get component renderer. And then all we need to do in our update is create a float called offset that will be equal to time.time .time times our scroll speed. And then we'll set our renderers rend material dot set texture offset. We'll find the texture called main text, which we'll always have. You don't need to worry about creating anything for that. And we'll set it to a new vector2 offset on the x because we're moving on the x and we'll leave it as zero on the y and it's as simple as that so if we jump over and on our buildings layer we'll add in our background scroll script and we'll set this to five i think and just to give it that bit of depth we can also add the same script onto our stars and we'll just give that a 1. We'll see how this looks. 
That is way too fast. Okay, so buildings will be one and stairs will be 0.25. Let's see if that's any better. We can see it's already looking a little bit better. Maybe we'll uh, we'll tweak these a little bit more. Buildings 0.5 and stairs 0.1. Ah, that's looking a lot better. So our stairs are moving slowly off to the right, and our buildings are moving slowly down to the left. I still think those buildings are going too fast though. Point three. Come on, we've got to get this right. That's the one. There we go. So we've got point three on our building movement and point one on our star movements. It just adds that little bit of extra detail in there. And as you can see in our scene view, our texture's just wrapping around the plane itself. Actually, that's quite a cool angle, isn't it? I like that. <laughs> okay, so that's that about does it for this tutorial. Like I said, it was just a quick and easy one. We're just making it look a little bit nicer by adding a background in and a little bit of animation. In the next video, we're going to go into creating the UI for the game. So this, again, may be a longer tutorial. Just a heads up there, because we want to get this looking really good. So I hope you'll join me in the next tutorial. If you do, I'll see you there.